Welcome back to the review and today we're going to take a look at the How to Think When You Draw with Lorenzo, book volume 1. So this is, as you can see, volume 1. There is a volume 2, which I'm going to review later. They also have a How to Think When You Write. That comes at a later point. And even though it says how to think when you draw, drawing is a very important part of animating. I can draw, and this is why I got these, so I need to practice more. But there's more about just drawing. It's, there's a lot of character stuff in it, posing, line of action, variety, contrast, a lot of stuff in there. So I wanna go through some of those pages. What could potentially be helpful to you as an animator? So you got the book. This is the book in all its sides. You got here the contents nicely laid out character design, animals and monsters, vehicles and machines, elements, layout and composition, natural world, and world building. You got the introduction. And let's start with character design, which immediately for animation is pretty cool. So even though here, right, it goes through basic shoes. What I like about this is that you got just the way you can draw a foot with a curl, right? Even more curl down, curl up. But all of that is also for posing for you as you animate. And also like the different styles of shoes, the different poses. All of that gives you even ideas if you modify a character and you add clothing or different shoes, whatever it is, or just a basic pose. All of that is also really cool reference in terms of what you could use for your rigs. So it goes through hands, hand poses, grouping of fingers. Like for instance, breaking the pattern here, the motion in hands. And of course, lots of reference. Then it goes into noses. Again, if you're modifying your character, this is all good reference. Goes into ears, the hair, lots of detail for drawing, obviously. But once it goes into expressions, for instance, you have for anger, the first features to move are the eyebrows and top lips. It gets for you kind of like the, the lines of where you want to concentrate. But depending on the actions and in the angle, you can emphasize certain elements for your line of action within the head. You got asymmetry, which is always huge that I constantly talk about in animation. But you got your asymmetry and different grouping here, how you can squeeze and pinch certain facial features. Lots of reference, again, just for facial expressions or modifications of a face. Continuing with expressions, try tilting the eyes and mouth towards the same focal point. So lots of interesting little points here. Character shapes, obviously very important just to have a very readable shape in your character. Character expansion pack. Then you got into, again, more expansion on how you can group shapes. Running figures, you can see the line of action, how you can push these and what that means in terms of, say, the weight load or the energy of it. And then it goes into chapter two, animals and monsters. Now, you might not have to do anything with horns, but I'm a big fan of tentacles. They're a pain to animate, but just the way, I mean, from a drawing perspective, it's really cool, but just looking at how they droop, how they fall, how they get connected in a knot, as with animals, it goes to specific ones. You got pigs, birds, horse heads. But even with that, just the way the ears are, the hair, the expressions, the tilt of the head, like all of that is really good reference as you pose out your character. Monster heads, lots of reference again. Squirrels, but just look at this, just that in terms of how you would pose out your character. Even if you don't really care about any of things of the smoothness, is it straight versus curves? or how the characters are the ups and downs and depending on the movements. Just looking at the drawings themselves, this is all really good reference just for general posing. Dogs, got your sausage dog here. The flow of the spine, stretch and the squash, secondary forms for direction and focus. Vehicles, and I love this because you would think that, well, vehicles, maybe that is not really something I need to think about when I animate. But again, reference, they just look really cool. But once it gets to stuff like this, which is really neat because you, there are lots of rigs. There are mechanical rigs and mechs and robots. I love when it gets to cars. You got your Caterpillar tracks. Here, I love this, vehicle stands. So even a car technically could have a pose. Now, you're going to look at a movie like Cars, of course, you're going to have poses. But if you just have humans in the cars or just somewhere, maybe don't just plop your set pieces around. Maybe you want to even give a car a certain personality and how it's leaning. Maybe it kind of mimics the owner of the car. So I like this here too, just the way they're leaning, like what side is elevated, the lines. More reference here. Space bikes, come on, who doesn't love space bikes? Planes. And they got elements. Now, this is a bit more for effects animation, but nonetheless, very cool, good reference. 
But if you are adding things like that in your scene, just to kind of expand on the set, so it's not just the character and empty scene, and you kind of plus out the environment, you still want to look at reference and make it more organic and cool and asymmetrical and just very appealing. Again, I think those pages are all super, super helpful. Smoke effects, if you're doing something by hand, lightning, you got glass breakings, which elements comes first, what to focus on, the direction of the break, the debris, fabric. It might be tricky if you are to any type of simming, but if it just hangs there again, it's always good. And I love this, layout and composition, which obviously you're going to use as you start your shot. And I love this, just the clear presentation, foreground, background, background in that type of tutorial. Basics, again, for framing with interior. This is something I'm really struggling with, thinking in 3D when I draw. This is going to be one of the major things I need to focus on. But it covers that. Composition again, expansion pack, of course. Boxes, this is that for you to draw again, something for me to think about, for sure. I love this again. The horizon, this goes back into how do you compose the shot, how the staging is like. This is interesting. You might not need this for animation, but still interesting to have. Negative space, for sure. Love that. Shadow composition, just to make the shot really, really clear. Comic covers, that might be something else. Car chases. Natural worlds, too. So again, this is if you plus out your shot, you want to think about, well, as you put things, how do they flow? What's the grouping of certain elements? In this case, mushrooms, jungle plant clusters, more reference, trees, roots. Not sure how many times you want to use gems and crystals, but it's there. That for sure. Rock formations, you'll see this in a set. Caves, that's cool too. Just the look of that, that entrance, that could be a shape. How it line, the lines lead into the cave, or you have that in a circle pattern. World building. Even this, I just love this. Like a twist to the books or how the letters are going to imply the, the, the lines of the pages. Like that just to me, just super, super interesting. Love this too. Instead of just having copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, you have offsets. You can make some scrunched together and be broken. I love all this just for adding just the organic and kind of lived in world feel. Tiki statues in case you need them. In world typography. Again, you may or may not need that, but brickwork. Again, to make it more offset and organic and not so computery, copy pasted. Buildings or reference. Junk houses. Also very cool. That's interesting. Game buildings. Chapter for that. Pot houses. These are really cute. It's almost like little faces there. But I love how it's presented in its simple form. And then you can expand on that with more details. And that's it. You got some other books you can enjoy. They do a lot of Kickstarters. So make sure that you are following them on Twitter. I'll put in all the links in the description. And that is the book. Like I said, there is a part two. I'm going to cover that at a later point. Make sure you do follow them on Twitter because they do tweet out a lot of those pages. So if you missed out on the Kickstarter, you don't have means to buy that. They put out a lot of stuff for free. So follow them. They sometimes feature things from their books or sometimes they feature things from other artists. So there's a lot that they cover. I'd love for you to collect and put into your reference folder. But they're very frequent in their Kickstarter updates and releasing new books. So keep an eye on their announcements. So whenever they release a new book, they give the opportunity to reorder the previous books so you don't miss out. Like I said, link in the description with all the information. I Highly recommend that you check those out. If you feel like these reviews are cool, I do reviews every Wednesday. So subscribe, hit that bell button so you don't miss any of those reviews. And other than that, I will thank you for still watching this. If you're watching this until the very end, I appreciate your time. And I will see you tomorrow in the next clip.